want to see the intuition behind the little theorem of Fermat, you're at the right place. This is the lesser known math. So here is the theorem. If I give you any prime number p and another number a, which is not a multiple of p, so a is not p, 2p, 3p, and so forth, then this quantity over here, a to power p minus a, is divisible by p. Let's look at one quick example. So let's take p equals to 3, for example. It's a prime number. And let's a be 7. So obviously 7 is not equal to 3, 6, 9, uh, etc. Then a to power p minus a is just 7 to power 3 minus 7. And this is 343 minus 7 or 336. And of course, 3 divides 336. Let's look at one more. If I take p equals 5, another prime number, and a equals 4, then a to power p minus a will be just 4 to power 5 minus 4, or 1020, which of course is divisible by 5. Okay, so it works again, but why does it work in the general case for any p and a I pick? We will see in a second. Alright, so why does p divides a to the p minus a all the time? Well, can I give an interpretation to a to the p minus a? Here is a simple one. So if I take p different balls, like here, and if I cover each of them into one out of a different covers, then I have exactly a to the p different coverings for these balls. Why is that? Well, simply for the first bow, I have A options to cover it. For the second bow, also A options. So the total number of ways to cover these bows is just A times A times A, P number of times. So I have A to the P coverings, but let me subtract all those coverings where each bow is at the same cover. So I have exactly A such monochromatic coverings. So then A to the P minus A is exactly uh, the number of those coverings where I have at least two balls in different covers. So I can put these P balls in a circle and nothing will change, right? So once again, A to the P minus A will be just the number of different such necklaces where each of the p balls in them can be covered in one out of c covers, where c is more than one. So I have at least two different covers here for my necklace. So here is the reason for the little theorem to be true. Basically, if you take any given necklace in this set of a to the p minus a necklaces, then it turns out that if you rotate it, then you always get a different necklace you cannot get the same necklace. And for any given necklace, I can perform one out of p different rotations. So this means that my necklaces, which are that many, can be divided into groups. And in each group, I will have p different necklaces that you can get with rotations. And that's it. That's why p divides a to the p minus a. Now let's see more formally why what I said is true. Why if I take one of these necklaces and if I rotate it, I cannot get uh, that very same necklace. So I can number my balls in my necklace with the numbers 0, 1, 2 up to p minus 1. And I know that in this necklace that I took, I have at least two balls with different colors. So I can just say, okay, let the bow with number zero be in some cover and let me have another bow with number k in another cover. Now let me assume the opposite. Let me assume that if I rotate my necklace with our bows counterclockwise, then I, I will get the same necklace. So what does this mean? This means that, okay, if, for example, the cover of my bow zero was blue, then after the rotation, I'm getting the same necklace. So the bow with cover R is also blue. Okay, good. But if I get the same necklace, then I can rotate to another R balls counterclockwise. And then to another R balls and so forth. 
So now I will get a contradiction by showing that after certain number of rotations to these R balls counterclockwise, uh, I can basically move this ball with number zero to that ball with number K. And then they must be of the same color, but they are not. So that would be a contradiction. The contradiction comes because P is a prime number. Remember, I haven't still used this fact. When P is a prime number, I always have some number M, such that when I multiply M by R, I get some number which has the same divisor as K when I divide it by P. So with congruences, this means that um, these two numbers are congruent mod p. So we have that these r and k are greater than one and they're also different because we have two different balls. And just because p is a prime number, then we always have a solution to this equation over here. So there is always uh, some m such that m times r gives the same remainder as k when we divide by p. And we can see this easily. So m is just k times the inverse of r mod p and we always have an inverse for r and p is a prime so this is why we always have a solution which means that when we do m different rotations each of them with r balls counterclockwise we must get uh, to this ball so we get our contradiction yeah indeed we always get different necklaces when we rotate and that's why we have the theorem.